The day has finally come. 47 years, Syracuse men's head basketball coach Jim Beheim has officially retired and stepped down from the program. Despite Syracuse's tough year this season, many Orange fans and college basketball fans have been pondering on if this could be Jim Beheim's final year. Many fans have been waiting for him to step down, and many fans think that his ways of coaching are too easy to defend or score on, such as his 2-3 signature zone. Some fans love Jim Beheim and are sad to see this day come. Other fans have been waiting for this day since we lost to Bryant this year. No matter which side you are on in that debate, there is no denying what head coach Jim Beheim has done for this historic college basketball program. When people say that the 2003 championship wasn't won because of Beheim, guess why Carmelo Anthony committed to Syracuse? Coach Jim Beheim was one of the first big coaches to come to one of Melo's games in person and showed that they believed in Carmelo and his game from the beginning. That decision and action by Beheim ultimately ultimately that decision and action by Beheim ultimately led to an NCAA championship along with many other things. The past few years for Syracuse fans have been far from perfect, not making the tournament multiple times. When looking at Beheim's retirement, I think of this as a new chapter for the Syracuse Orange. With the positive outlook comes a few other things we need to go over. First of all, will this affect recruitment? Syracuse currently has two recruits verbally committed to the Orange, one in the 2023 class and one in the 2024 class. I've gotten the chance to have both of these players on the show, and although they say they are huge fans of Coach Beheim and would love to get the chance for, to play for a Hall of Famer like him, the reasons weren't fully centered around him. 2023 center commit William Patterson is from New York, and realistically Syracuse was his best offer by far, Oklahoma State being the closest. I think he will definitely stay committed, but class of 2024 commit Elijah Moore worries me a little bit more. Moore is one of the best shooters in his class and is also a top 100 recruit who had many other high level offers, and when I say high level, I mean teams that will make the tournament. Elijah Moore is also from New York and said his visits to Syracuse were amazing. What worries me the most is just the offers he had before, and now it looks like Syracuse could be a team kind of starting like a rebuild in a way with young guys and a new head coach. Hopefully Elijah Moore will stay committed because I cannot wait to watch him play in the Dome. Second, new head coach Adrian Autry. To be completely honest, I did not see this coming at all, but I love it. If you had asked me my predictions on the new head coach, I would have told you what I thought, which was hiring Jerry McNamara, but what I wanted was to either, either look out of the program or not hire Jerry McNamara. I just think McNamara is an assistant coach at this point in his career and his life, but I never thought the Orange would hire Adrian Autry. Autry was named an assistant coach right before the 2011 to 2012 season, but was then upgraded to an associate head coach in 2017. Autry has played a key role in developing Syracuse alumni who have gone to the league, such as Jeremy Grant. As an associate head coach, Autry mainly develops forwards, but recruits for all positions on the floor. Autry was a fantastic high school basketball player and also had a great career with the Orange as a player for four seasons. I'm very excited to see this chapter for Adrian Autry and his Syracuse Orange team. Best of luck to Adrian Autry, and I can't wait to see where he takes this program. Third, will Adrian Autry play a 2-3 zone? A big topic of discussion, especially this season, has been the 2-3 zone. When you think of Coach Beheim, you think the 2-3 zone. To answer this question simply, I really don't know. I think Autry has been a bystander of what this 2-3 zone has done, and I would love to see him incorporate both like most coaches do. Syracuse could have won a lot more of their close games if they had switched to a man or even played a man since the early tip-off. Beheim did say that his team wasn't a man defense team earlier this year, but towards the end of the year, the truth came out, and he ended up taking more of the blame on himself rather than the team saying it was his defense and teams nowadays could easily score on it. I guess we will have to wait and see what Altry says or shows to us, but I would love to see some man defense on the Syracuse team. Overall, Coach Beheim has done so much for this program and will go down in history as one of the best college basketball coaches of all time. This is the end of the Jim Beheim era, but the start of a whole new chapter for Adrian Autry and Syracuse basketball. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for weekly interviews and Syracuse basketball content.